Hi, this is James Sondriger here at Juniper Networks Education Services. Are you familiar with our learning pads? We offer 14 different pads covering the Junos OS and specific Juniper technologies. Each path shows the courses we offer and the relevant certifications in the order we suggest to maximize your learning. Just visit www.juniper.net slash learning pads to get started. When you click on a track, you'll see all the courses in that track and the associated certifications. You can click each course or certification to view more details. If you follow a learning path, you'll get the most from your training with Juniper Networks. Now, let's get to your learning bite. Hello, my name's Tom Hanley. I'd like to talk to you about IS to IS configuration in my learning bite. So, specifically, how do you configure interfaces for the intermediate system, the intermediate system protocol. How do you configure the protocol IS to IS? And then once you've configured and committed your configuration, how can you verify a couple quick commands you can use to verify your IS to IS configuration you've accomplished? What we're seeing here is the actual configuration within the IS to IS protocol by adding basically interfaces into that protocol. The first uh, command, we're adding a Gigabit Ethernet 001 interface. And when we're saying level one disable, what that means there is that interface is only going to operate at level two. So it's kind of opposite of what you basically are actually saying. So you're disabling level one, so meaning it will operate at level two. We're doing just the opposite on the second interface, Gigabit Ethernet 002. We're saying level two disable, which means it's going to be a level one interface only. And then for the loop X0 interface, we're basically not saying either level's disabled, so that interface is operating at both level one and level two by the absence of the level being disabled. And what we see down below there is the show command displaying, once we've done these set commands, what the candidate configuration look like once it's accomplished. So that's one of the two things we have to do for intermediate system, intermediate system configuration. The second thing is we must go to the interface configuration level specifically and enable the family ISO on the interfaces we want to be activated to be IS to IS enabled interfaces. And the reason why we have to do that is that IS to IS protocol is communicated at level two instead of level three as we have with OSPF. So uh, basically we're adding this family so that our interface will be able to communicate with other routers at level two. So what we see here is an example of Gigabit Ethernet 001 unit zero along with the family INET we're adding the family ISO basically to say it's going to operate and be a IS to IS functional interface. And then on the loopback zero interface now what we're adding is the family ISO but there's another thing we're also adding as well and this is a value called the network entity title or the net that must be added to at least one of the interfaces on the router to be IS to IS enabled and usually that's the loopback zero interface where it's configured. This is like the router ID function in OSPF. In other words, it, it has to be there and it has to be unique. It's made up of three fields. The first field we see to the left is the 49.0001. This field is the area ID. Now the area ID is the only variable length field in the network entity title. It can be anywhere from one to 13 bytes long. So the first part, which is the 49, that's a value called the authority and format indicator, the AFI. And uh, basically the 001 means it's in area one. So that basically is indicating the area. The next field is the system ID, and that is a fixed length field at six bytes or 48 bits. And so what we have to do is we have to put a unique value in here that uniquely identifies this router within the IS to IS environment. And quite often, this value, as we have in this example, is uh, kind of a variation of the loopback zero IP address. 
And it's not exactly the same because we're taking a 32-bit value and kind of taking it to a 48-bit value. So it's kind of a, a binary coded decimal version of the IP address. So that's a common deployment. That's kind of what we have in this example. Or it could be a MAC address on the router, or it could really be any value that we configure that's six bytes long that right is unique for identifying this router. The last field is a single byte, and it's the selector byte, and it's always 0, 0. Now, I talked about a couple of commands we can use to verify once we've committed the configuration, to verify simply whether it's uh, working correctly or not. So here's the show ISIS interface command. We see some variations of that. What we're showing you here basically is the base command. We see the interfaces to the left, the three interfaces we configured. The first interface to the left of that, you see L2, meaning because it's operating at layer 2. Gigabit Ethernet 001 operating at level layer 1, right? And loopback 0 interface is really operating at both levels, so basically it's 0. And then you see the level 1 uh, designated router. That's the uh, next field. Uh, because these are Gigabit Ethernet interfaces there, they have the election of a designated router. We see that at level 1, for the first interface, that's disabled because level 1 is disabled. But we have a designated router for level 2. That designated router happens to be the host name of our neighbor. So it's always the neighbor's host name there. All right. And then you see to the right there um, the actual level 1 and level 2 metrics. You see the default metrics for IS to IS, which is a value of 10 for both. For Gigabit Ethernet 002, you see similar values, only it's operating at level 1 and basically kind of the reverse for the designated routers because it's only operating at level one. Now you see the loopback zero interface that basically has been kind of operating at both level one and level two. You see it's a passive interface and that's with uh, Junos loopback zero interfaces are automatically placed into a passive condition. You see the actual metrics for the loopback zero interface they default to, to zero for both level one and level two. The next command is the actual show is to is adjacency command to display the neighbor relationships from this router that's been created. We see we have two neighbor relationships that have been created, one on the two interfaces we configured, both with the same neighbor, and that's in the system field, that's the actual host name of the neighbor. We have uh, the Gigabit Ethernet 001 interface is a level 2 adjacency and Gigabit Ethernet 002 is a level 1 adjacency. You see they're both in a state of up. We have the hold down field which is a down counter basically counting in seconds down to zero. Once it reaches zero that means that we have not received a hello in a required period of time so our adjacency would be broken when it reaches zero. The subnetwork point of attachment, that's the SNPA field. Now with Ethernet interfaces, which we have, that is the MAC address of the neighbor. So basically you see the MAC address of each neighbor we've created adjacency relationship with. What I'd like to do is to show you now the uh, commands that were used to actually create this uh, configuration. So let's go to the protocol level. So set protocol IS to IS, the two interfaces, so actually three interfaces. In the first one, we disable level one. And the second interface, we did just the opposite. We put it into IS to IS protocol but disabled level two. And then we kind of put in the loopback zero interface, actually the protocol. And just put the interface into IS to IS, making sure we add in the interface value. And then once we kind of dis do a show of the configuration, we'll see kind of what we've created, similar to what we saw in the slide a little bit earlier. Uh, next thing we had to do is configure the family ISO on the interfaces. We want it to be IS to IS enabled. So we'll go to the interfaces. Uh, 
and then add the family ISO. So that's Scabity Ethernet 001 dot unit 0 and then 2 and then the loopback 0 interface we we added the address. Uh, so the first part is the authority format indicator portion of the area field. Keep in mind that this is a variable length field there. Here our value is 3 bytes, but it could be anywhere from 1 to 13 bytes. And then the next field is the system ID, which is always a fixed length value at 6 bytes. So uh, what I'm going to use here is basically a variation of the loop x0 IP address. So that's the system ID and the last field is with a selector byte. And then uh, commit the configuration and then once it's committed then we can do the to show commands to verify that what we've configured is is working correctly or at a basic level is correct. All right, so first we'll display the IS-IS interfaces. So we see the three interfaces here. You see the first one is at level two. We've disabled, uh, we don't have a level one designated router, but we have the level two designated router like in the capture. Uh, and then of course the default metrics and we see the just kind of the opposite for Gigabit Ethernet 002. It's operating at level one and we have only a level one uh, designated router. And you see for the loopback zero interface at both because we made it level one, level two interface by omitting the level portion of the command that's operating as a passive interface at both level one and level two and the default metrics being zero for both level one and level two. So if we do a display of the IS-IS adjacency, we see that we have the two adjacency relationships created for these two routers. They're basically the system, which is the actual neighbor host name, is the same neighbor. We have a level two adjacency first, level one. They're both in a state of up. And again, we have the hold down timer, which is the down counter for basically the time we receive the hello packet from our neighbor. And then you see the sub network point of attachment, which are the MAC addresses associated with our neighbors. So uh, what I'd like to kind of do now is uh, summarize what we talked about in the learning by. We talked about how to configure interfaces in the is is protocol, enabling and also configuring in the interface level of configuration, the family ISO, and that kind of activated the interface, the logical interface to be an is to is enabled interface at level two layer two. And then on one of the interfaces being the loopback zero interface, uh, how we would actually add the network entity title and what the network entity title was. And then we showed you a couple commands to actually verify the configuration that we have done was correct. So thank you for joining me in this learning bite. For additional information, we have uh, the link at the bottom of the slide. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.